we want to greet you again and also to warmly welcome you to the program known as Back to the Bible. We are dealing with 10 things that will enable a person to benefit from the Bible. Let me mention them again. Uh, number one, you must know the Bible. Number two, you must receive the Bible with trembling and with reverence. Number three, you must obey the Bible. Number four, you must believe the Bible. Number five, you must practice the Bible. Number six, you must live the Bible out. You must exemplify it. Number seven, you must walk the Bible. Number eight, you must model the Bible. Number nine, you must make sure that the Bible bears fruit in your life. And lastly, you must spread the word. Now, last week, we dealt with three. Number one, you must know the Bible. I don't want to spend a lot of time revising. But it is important for you to know the word of God because you can't be helped by, the, by something that you don't know. Then we also said you must receive the Bible. We talked about it. You must receive it. And then we also talked about the fact that you must believe the Bible. Um, now we are going to talk about three things, three or four things uh, today. Um, number one, you must obey the Bible. That's the first thing. The Bible helps you only when you obey it. It's possible for you to receive the Bible out of curiosity. You receive the Bible because you like it. But when it tells you what to do, and if it tells you to do something that you don't want to do, then you disobey it. Uh, in other words, you could receive the Bible selectively. You select the things that you want and you do them. And when it tells you the things that you don't like, then you don't do it. But in, in order for the Bible to help, to help you, you must obey it. What does it mean to obey? To obey, it means to submit. You must submit to the Word of God. To obey means to follow. You must follow the instructions of God's Word. To obey means to observe, to observe. You must observe what the Bible says. There are many scriptures that talk about observing the word of God. Maybe let me show you a few of them observing the word of God. Observe what it tells you. Uh, uh, most of them are found in the, in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 4 verse 6 says, Observe them carefully, the word of God. Observe them carefully, for this will show, show your wisdom and understanding to the nations uh, who will hear about all these decrees uh, and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. He says you must observe the decrees of God. Uh, 5 uh, Deuteronomy 5 verse 12 observe the Sabbath no one those that says observe the word of God you must observe the word of God and uh, 6 verse 5 these are the commands these are the decrees and the laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe these are the commands, these are the decrees, these are the laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing um, the Jordan to possess. So to obey means to submit, to follow, to observe, to conform. You must conform to the word of God, to comply with the word of God, to act upon it. So we, we, need to, we need to obey the word. Let's look at a few scriptures then that 
uh, speak directly about the issue of obeying the word of God. Psalm 119. Psalm 119 talking about observing the word of God. Psalm 119 and we want to look at verse 17 and see so what it says about observing the word of God. It says in Psalm 119 and verse 17, it says, I'm getting there, uh, it says, do good to your servant and I will live. I will obey your word. I will obey your word. When the word of God comes to us, honestly, you need to obey it. It benefits you only as you obey it. If you don't obey the word, the word will not benefit you. So David says, I will obey your word. Um, then you go to, uh, to verse 34, even in this psalm again, Psalm 119, in verse 34 now. We're reading 17. We will go to 34, and 34 says, Psalm 119, verse 34, Give me understanding, and I will keep your law, and obey it. You remember that we said the, the, the law refers to the word of God. The five books of Moses, which are known as the Torah, or they are known as the Pentateuch, the five books from uh, the book of Genesis to Numbers, all those five books, they are known as the law. He says, now give me understanding and I will keep your law. I will obey it with all my heart. Now here, uh, Moses adds a dimension to this obedience, that you don't obey the word with your head. You obey the word with your heart. It is important that your heart receives the word and your heart obeys the word. Uh, then we go to, see, uh, to uh, verse 60. It touches me that all these verses are found in Psalm 119 and uh, this is David who wrote the psalm. He says, I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. Oh, I, that makes me happy. I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. When God speaks to you uh, through his word, once you delay to obey it, you may not obey it. At the time when the word of God convicts you, Let's assume that you are gossiping about someone and then the word of God convicts you about gossiping and then, you, and then something says to you, call the person with whom you are gossiping and tell him that you did not do well, you want to repent. Once the word says that, call that person immediately because if you don't do it immediately, you delay that conviction will lessen and all of a sudden you, you will not do it. <clears throat> the other word that we use when you say, I will hasten to obey your word is prompt obedience. When the word of God speaks to you, it shows you something you did not know was wrong. You did not know it, it was sinful. And the word of God convicts you about it. Do something about it immediately. Obey God promptly. Then God will bless you. On the other hand, the word of God tells you what to do. Let's assume you did not know that tithing was something that the word of God teaches. Then you realize that tithing is the correct thing. As soon as God teaches you that tithing is the correct thing, do it immediately. You must obey the word of God promptly. So 
David here says, I will hasten, I will make haste. To hasten is to do something quickly. I will hasten, I will not delay to obey your word. So when you receive the word of God, obey it. Let me ask you the question. What is the point in God sending you his word if you not obey it? Why should he send you the word? That's the reason why sometimes you used to be a person who used to hear from God. And all of a sudden, the voice of God became quiet. Why did it become quiet? Why did it become quiet? It is because when God spoke to you, he did not obey. And therefore God says, what is, there's no point in me speaking to this person because I know this person does not obey. If you want God to continue to speak to you, what must you do? You must hasten to obey the word of God. You must obey God promptly. You must not delay. Uh, when I was growing up uh, in the rural areas, there are things that I learned that have helped me. For an example, when your mother sends you to go and do something, if you delay to do it, your mother would, uh, would be very angry with you. Would say, did you hear what I was saying to you? If you said I heard it, but I'm going to do it, he would even uh, beat you for not obeying her promptly. God wants us to obey him promptly, and then God will be happy. Another scripture that talks, I'll give you two other scriptures that talks about obeying the word of God. John 14, John chapter 14 and verse 27. John 14 and verse 27 talks again about obeying the word of God. It says, Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Uh, no, no, no. I'm reading a wrong verse because it does not say. No, it's 23. Verse 23. Will you pardon me, please? Verse 23. Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. Hmm? If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. Do you know that when the word of God comes to you and you obey it, you show that you love God. But when the word of God comes to you and you disregard it, and you behave as if God has not spoken, you 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 become indifferent uh, to God's word. It shows that you don't love him. He says, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him. Once you obey God's word, God will love you. And will come, and we will come to him and make our home with him. But the point I want to stress is that when you get the word of God, if you want to benefit from it, you must obey the word of God. And then the Bible says, God will love you. That was John 14 and verse 23. 1 Peter 1 and verse 22. 1 Peter uh, chapter 1. And verse 22 again talks about the issue of obeying the word of God. It says in verse 22, it says, Now that you have purified yourself by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply, from your heart. Let's go back to the first part of the verse. Now that you have purified yourself by obeying the truth. 
Oh, when you obey the word of God, it purifies you. When you obey the word of God, the word of God purifies you. Now I understand when Christ says, you are clean. Uh, let's go to that verse. Let's go to that verse, John 15 and verse 3. And put your finger in this first Peter, uh, chapter 1, 22, verse 1 John, I mean John chapter 3, John chapter 15 and verse 3. You are already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Now he says, now you have purified yourself for obeying the truth. Now he, has, he says, you are already clean through the word that I've spoken to you. When you obey the word of God, it cleanses you. It purifies you. When you don't obey the word of God, even though you have known it, you have even received it, and you have believed it, but if you don't obey it, you will not become pure. So what is the fourth thing you must do in order for you to benefit from the word of God? You've got to obey it. Let me ask you a question. When you go to church on Sunday and you sit down and the man of God stands up to preach and this man has been praying about the message throughout the week and the Lord gives, me, gives him a message that is just suitable for you and the man of God faithfully preaches the word of God, what is your response to it? Do you obey it or do you fold your Bible at the end of the service? And you forget even before you leave the premises where the word was preached, you have already forgotten it. Is it no wonder why you are not growing? Is it, is it a wonder that you are not making any progress in your life? The reason you are not progressing in your faith, you are not progressing in your spiritual life is because you are not obeying the word of God. Some of you uh, belong to a place where you are taught the word of God. Uh, we are sitting down. You are taught methodically, very, very meticulously, very carefully the word of God. What do you do at the end? Do you know that when you don't obey the word of God, it is as though what God was saying is not important. You are saying, I've heard what you are saying, but it's really not important. I don't have to obey it. If the word of God will benefit you, what must you do? Obey it. Finally, in this method of obeying the word, some of you do what is known as daily devotions. And I wish that everyone could do that. What is daily devotions? Daily devotions is when you wake up very early in the morning before you wa wash your face, before you do anything, you kneel next to your bed, you open the Bible, you, you read the Bible with a, a notebook next to it, so that whatever God teaches you, you'll put it down. We call it spiritual journaling. You put it down uh, in your notebook, you write down the date, the scripture from which God was speaking to you, and what God said to you, isn't it? Now, if you do daily devotions and God speaks to you daily and you don't obey, why should God speak to you? Why should he? So it is important for you to obey the word. It will benefit you when you obey the word. That is the fourth thing uh, to do. And then the fifth thing to do is to practice the word, to practice it. What does it mean to practice? I like the definition of the word, to rehearse. When you rehearse, you try it out, isn't it? Oh, God said I should not be angry. Let me practice not being angry. Let me rehearse not being angry. The Bible teaches me to be patient. Okay, let me practice being patient. Something makes me to be impatient. I'm going to rehearse. Uh, patience. So to do the word of God is to rehearse, <clears throat> is to put it into practice, is to put it to test, is to, is to test it, to see whether it works or not. 
you must practice the word of God. Once you obey it, you say, oh, God says I must do this. Let me practice it. God says I must give a tithing. Let me practice giving tithings. The Lord of God says I must be obedient to my husband. Let me practice being obedient to my husband. The Bible says I must love my wife. Let me practice loving my wife. So to do the word of God is to rehearse it. It means to exercise what God tells you. It means to train yourself to do it. To practice is training. It means to repeat. In other words, the word of God tells you something. You repeat it after the word. So the Bible says, I must, I must love my wife. I'm going to repeat what the Bible says. I will love my wife. Practice the word. Practice it. And when you practice the word, it will benefit you immensely. I will just refer to two scriptures for now. And then I will mention others. I hope you are writing down. When you come to this program, come with your Bible and come with a notebook so that you write down the things that you are learning. James chapter 1, about doing the word. James chapter 1, from verses 22 to 25. Verses 22 to 25, practicing or doing the word. Verse 22 says, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Let's analyze that verse. Do not merely listen to the word. If you listen to the word and you don't do anything about it, the Bible uses the word mere. You are merely listening to the word. Then it says, you deceive yourself. When you listen to the word and you don't practice it, you give an impression that you love God. You give an impression that uh, you want to do what the Bible tells you to do. Merely. You are a hypocrite when you do that. So you must not merely listen, listen to the word uh, because when you do that, the Bible says you are deceiving yourself. You are deceiving yourself. Then what must you do? It says you must do it. Underline that. Do not merely listen to the word. That's the first part. If you merely listen to the word, you are deceiving yourself. Do what it says. I'm learning something. Oh, the word of God speaks. Ah, it speaks. The word of God is God speaking to me. Is word of God is word of God that says, Don't be angry. It says, Don't be angry. Is the word of God that says, Don't gossip. It says, it speaks to you. It says, Don't gossip. The word of God says. Uh, forgive those who despitefully use you. The word of God speaks. When the word speaks, it is God speaking. So it says, do what it says. Verse 23. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says, underline the word, what it says, and does not do what it says, it's like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, goes away, immediately forgets what he looks like. When you look at yourself at the mirror and the mirror shows that there's something that is not right, your hair is, is unkempt, then you do this to your hair. Uh, to make sure that it is right. If it shows that you were eating and something was left here, then you remove it. That is the point of looking at the mirror. 
But if you look at the mirror and it shows you something that is wrong and you don't correct it immediately, now you don't know whether this thing was here, whether it was here, or whether it was here. Uh, it is when the Bible, it is when the mirror shows you that it is here that you remove it right then before you forget. So the Bible teaches us that when the word speaks to you and you don't act on it, you forget. The Bible says the devil comes and he snatches it away. Forgetting is the devil snatching it away before it helps you. Then verse 25. It says, but the, word, but the man who looks intently, you, looks, you look to the Bible with an intention. The word intently, it means you intend. Intently comes from intending. So it says, the man who looks intently into the law, that gives freedom. The law that gives freedom, the law of liberty is the Bible. The Bible frees you. When you read the Bible, you must have an intention. What is the intention? To obey it. What is the intention? To practice what it says. If you read the Bible and you've got no intention, you're wasting the word of God. So you look and do the word how? Intently. With an intention. And the intention is to practice. He says and continues to look. I like that. When he says continues to look, sometimes you read the Bible, it surprises you. You go back again to it. You read it again. You say, ah, does the Bible say this? You don't read it casually. Let's, let's say you're a teacher. You do your devotion in the morning at four, and the Lord, word of God, speaks to you. But you're teaching very, very far. And therefore, after reading the Bible, you must go and wash quickly. You must prepare to go to school. But the word of God is ringing. During the break at school, you go to that scripture again and continue to do this, continue to look at it. You look at the word of God repeatedly so that you notice things from it. Those of you who have done this will be surprised. You read the verse, it speaks to you. When you go back, you discover something else. When you go back the third time, you still dis discover something else. It says, but the man who looks intently with an intention into the Bible and then continues to do it. Continues to do it, reflecting on the word of God. Not forgetting what he has had, but doing it. He'll be blessed in what he does. Now, let me underscore something here now in this verse. This verse says, he will be blessed in what he does. You are not blessed in what you've seen. You are blessed in what you do after seeing. So let's assume that you have re read 10 verses and you do three. What is the ratio of blessing? You are blessed in the three things that you have done. The seven things that you have not done, you are not blessed in them. So you are, you, you are blessed you get 30% blessings because the Bible spoke to you about 10 things and you decided to do three. So your ratio of blessing is 30%. Let's assume that you read, you read 10 things and you do five. What is your ratio of blessings? It's 50%. Why are you blessed only 50%? It's because you decided to do 50 who decides who decides the amount of blessings you must receive? It's you. If you do 30, you'll be blessed 30%. If you do 50 out of, 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 of 10, 50 out of 100, you are blessed 
50%. Let's assume the Bible teaches you 10 things and you do 7. What is the ratio? 70%. Who has decided that the blessing should be 70%? It's you. How? Because you did. You are blessed not in what you have read, what you have heard. You are blessed in what you do. Let's assume you are a very obedient child of God. God speaks to you about 10 things. And you do 10, 10 things. What is your ratio of blessing? 100%. You deprive yourself the blessings of God when you don't do everything that God teaches you. It's like when you go to school and the teacher teaches you, you go to university, university they lecture so you come to school and the teacher says this thing these things are important and then you uh, he, he, he lectures he lectures he lectures he lectures after the lecture you go back you revise all that this teacher was was teaching you go to write an exam everything you taught you is there you get hundred percent because you did 100% of what he taught you. If God teaches you his word, make sure that you do everything that he tells you. I'm telling you, you are an A student. You'll pass with distinction because you obey the word of God. You are blessed not in what you have read from the Bible. You are blessed in what you do. That was James chapter 1, verses 22 to 25. Let's read the last verse on this point, and then I'll quickly go to the last one. Quickly go to the last one. Remember, we're talking about how can you benefit from the Bible. We're giving you tips to benefit from the Word of God. You must obey it, and you must practice it. You must rehearse what the Bible tells you. Now John chapter, did I say 13? Yes, 13. John chapter 13 and verse 17. John chapter 13 and verse 17. Can I read it? Uh, maybe before I read it, Christ was teaching his disciples the the virtue the virtue of serving one another the blessings of serving your brothers the story is that they were sitting at the table they were about to eat and in palestine the the land is sandy and they were wearing sandals now their feet were dirty so Jesus Christ took uh, a basin of water and he, he took a towel and then he washed their feet. And then after he has washed their feet, then he asked them the question, do you understand, verse 12, do you understand what I've done for you? It was after he, he has washed their, their feet. Do you understand what I've done for you, he asked them. Then verse 13, you call me teacher. You also call me Lord. You are right in calling me a teacher because I'm your teacher. You are right in calling me Lord because, because I'm your Lord. For that is what I am. Verse 14. Now that, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wa wa wash one another's feet. Verse 15. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is the messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now verse 17. Now that you know these things, 
You will be blessed if you do that. Do you know how I wish this verse read? Let me tell you how I wish this verse said, read. I wish this verse said, now that you know these things, you'll be blessed. We are not blessed in knowing. There is so much we know. We have been taught the Bible in Sunday school. We have been attending church every Sunday. And if you are a disciple, you are attending discipleship, you are taught the word of God. There is so much that you know, but still you are not blessed. Why? You don't do. You are not blessed in what you know. You are blessed in what you do. Oh, may I beg you to do the word of God. And when you do the word of God, blessings will multiply. You will grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And God will be pleased with you. You will be his beloved child. And God will heap blessing upon blessing on you if you do the word of God. What is the secret of benefiting from the Bible? Today we say you must obey it, isn't it? And then today we say you must also practice it. And then lastly, I'm just introducing it. If you practice it, practice it, practice it, practice the word of God. It must be part of your life. It must be part of your life. You must live it. If the Bible says you must be kind, people must see you being kind as your life. Live it. If the Bible says you must be truthful, you must always speak the truth, even when it hurts you. Let me give an example. I asked a friend of mine to drive my car to go to town to buy me something. Then when he was just entering my, my gate, here comes another car trying to overtake him, and he was already turning. This car hit him. Now, I had to report this to the insurance. It would have been easier for me to say I was driving the car and then I had an accident. But I had to speak the truth. I must leave the Bible. I must leave it. I must not only practice it when it is convenient for me to practice it. I must practice it at all times, it must be my life. So when I filled up, when I called the insurance, they asked who was driving. I had to speak the truth. He was driving. Okay. And then they wanted to get his license. I gave his license. I filled the form, put down his name, and I put down uh, his license. They discovered that this license had expired. He had not yet renewed it. Then the insurance said, we will not pay uh, because this man's license had expired. Now I called a lawyer and then the lawyer said, no, there's a difference between a license that has expired and a person who does not have a license. If he has a license but he has not renewed it, then he can renew it. It does not mean it does not, it does not have a license. So I told the insurance, and the insurance wanted to give me some troubles. He renewed the license, he sent it. Guess what? The insurance paid. And my conscience was clear because I had spoken the truth. We must live the Bible. It must be part of your life. You must never ever think of lying. Because the Bible says... You must speak the truth. Uh, so we must leave the Bible, we must leave it out. I'll just quote one verse. Matthew 4, 4. Leave it out. Let it be part of your life. Matthew 4, 4 says, Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but he lives on every word that comes from the mouth of God. 
You live on it. You live on it. It's your life. Everything that God has said to you must inform your life. Can I use a big word? I'll explain it. The word, big word, is incarnation. Incarnation. Incarnation means it something it, it has become flesh. So the word of God must be incarnated in you. It must become flesh. When people look at your life, they look at you. They must see the word of God. The reason why the word of God has no power, the word of God has no credibility, is because we preach it, is because we teach it, but we don't live it. But the day Christians live the word of God, I'm telling you, even non-believers will believe the word, will practice the word. We discredit the word by not uh, living it out. So today we have said three things. In order for you to benefit from the word of God, you must obey it. It's not enough for you to know it, to receive it, and to believe it if you don't obey it. You must obey it. Then the next thing that you must do, when it comes to ob obedience, we said you must hasten to obey the word of God. You must do the word of God promptly. As soon as it says something to you, you must do it immediately. Then the next thing that we said, we said that you must practice the word of God. And I like the word rehearsal. You must rehearse the word of God. You will never know whether the word of God is effective or not until you put it into practice. Test it and see if the word of God really means what it says. You must practice the word of God. You rehearse it, repeat it, exercise it, drill, drill yourself to do the word of God. That's what it means to practice. You must practice the word. And we say that you are blessed in what you do. You are not blessed in what you know. And then lastly, you must live the word of God. When you practice the word of God, you will even you will even not do it without thinking. You don't have to read the Bible before you do it. It becomes part of your life. You don't have to open a verse in order for you not to lie. You just know that the Bible says I must not lie. Whether you read a verse, you don't read a verse, it is part of your life. The Bible says I must love other people. I don't have to read the Bible. It's part of my life. That's what they say, I have internalized the word. Then the word is part of my life. Oh, I pray that God will raise in these last days Christians who have internalized the word of God. Christians who live out the word of God. Christians who have incarnated the word of God. The word of God, they are a book. Uh, when others look at their lives, they are a book that people can read. I pray that the Lord will raise that crop of disciples in these last days. I pray that the word of God will bless you. I want you to write to me if you want to ask questions. Uh, my, my email address is vindindili, vindindili uh, at gmail.com. Just write to me and ask questions. You can call me at 082 297 1931 082-297-1931. Let's interact over the word of God. Let's pray together now. Father, we thank you so much that there are people who have decided to uh, tune in into this uh, um, uh, YouTube uh, channel uh, to be learning your word. We just pray that uh, this word that they are getting will bless them. We just pray that it will convict them very deeply, deeply, that there will be changes. And if there are things that they don't understand, help them to write to me so that we can interact over your word. We don't want your word to be wasted. We want to put your word into practice. Please bless your children. We thank you and we bless you. 
In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. God bless you. And we will meet, ne we'll meet next week on this program called Back to the Bible. The Lord bless you. Amen.